happened by two o'clock in the afternoon. Clouds came in. It started to cool off. The wind started to blow. They started to get some rain. And the weather changed and it relieved the heat that they had in the morning. In the morning at 8 a.m., it was 98 degrees and about 102 inside the building with no air movement. It was hard to handle. And by four o'clock in the afternoon, it was a comfortable low 80s. Yep. And, and it is God that did that. A absolutely. There was, there was no storm scheduled, <laughs> right? None. And what? and don't schedule any more. <laughs> Stop scheduling them, everybody, and focus on the storms passing. And if if I can summarize what you just said there, Dave, because I love you so much and I, I really appreciate what you said. You know, there there's a lot of people, and because this all ties back to the original question of of the marriage contract and these other contracts that we have. And yesterday a topic came up about NDAs. And then a topic came up about trustees. And a lot of those things are, let's say, corporate contracts that attorneys created. So many times attorneys, if you open a trust with an attorney, will say, well, let me be the trustee. And they're the first ones to steal. And, and that's just so representative of all of these. Your, your trust is primarily with God. Your marriage is with God. And, and the other party, it's not with these interlopers. And when you bring them into the mix, you know, they're, they're designed to take you away from your faith in God to have faith in man and have faith in that trustee or have faith in that piece of paper or whatever it may be. And David, you said it so amazingly that yes, God will change the weather. God will change the storm. God will change the money. God will change this, uh, you know, the, the inhuman conditions on earth and, and take care of it for us. And, and he's taking it care of for you and Bonnie right now. And for all of us, it doesn't mean we don't have to do anything. Um, we still have to work in faith, but uh, it, it's, it's happening. And thank you for that one, David. Sure. That's uh, that was masterfully put. <laughs> and remember, because we can't see past the trench that we're in the basement that we're working on, there is a picture and there is hope. And with that hope, it invites that faith in the evidence of things that aren't yet revealed because those things, we speak those things that be not as though they are, as if they exist for us now. And so just because we may not see what's around us or what's past what's around us, uh, there is other things happening. There are other uh, uh, parties at work and there are some uh, some really good things that God has in store, and um, we'll just call him the, the master general. He sees the full picture when all we see is what we're in right now. So, right. You know, uh, our biggest problem as a people is our lack of knowledge, and and we we many of us are very very well educated when it comes to school, colleges, d different degrees those kind of things and it doesn't matter even if you if you're a doctor and have a doctorate or a master and have a master's degree uh on and on and on we have been indoctrinated and we've been indoctrinated to be incredibly stupid with certain things that are truly righteously important in life and and uh, I, this morning I, I, I dealt with, with two different, very smart, intelligent people. And, and I just want to say, these guys, these guys have got eight to 10 years of college education after high school. They've got high IQs. They're brilliant in their profession both of them just brilliant people and they're so incredibly and i don't want to say stupid unknowledgeable 
They're so unknowledgeable in the righteous truth. But they're learning and they want to know. They want to know. They've got a hunger for it that is great. And I commend them for that. They want to study. But here's the issue. They grasp the concepts when I tell them because of their intelligence very, very quickly. And they just go, oh my God, how stupid am I? And I look at them, I go, look at, my gosh, you're, you've got a doctorate degree. You're, you're intelligent. You've had 10 years of education after high school. You're brilliant in your profession. You You've done incredible things. And they're just going, I'm stupid. I'm, I, I can't believe it. I'm waking yeah. up and realizing where the importance is. Yep. And then they realize that what they learned in their profession. Indoctrination. 10 years of indoctrination after the 13 of grade school and high school. <laughs> 10 more years of indoctrination and they're learning that what they've been doing for 25, 30, 40 years in their profession is all a lie. And if you want to see a guy go through some emotion like I saw a guy go through some emotion today where first he was feeling stupid second he withdrew into himself and he analyzed his life and himself in a matter of a few minutes sitting on a couch and then he went like a flower and he just blossomed and then he got mad and he got angry that's the apocalypse he saw the love and the righteousness in it all when he was a flower and when he was blossoming and then the anger set in and that anger went right to his core his face turned red his muscles tensed up he became this warrior he never knew he was. All in a period of a less than an hour, maybe half hour, 45 minute conversation with me. Just talking about the state national revolution and why we all do it and what it truly means in an in-depth, heartfelt way right down to your inner core being yeah and i watched what he went through in these multiple layers and then guess what happened he left oh. i got a phone call i got a phone call that made me go through those same exact emotions where first I felt, oh my gosh, I'm stupid. Why are we what 